Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about when it's actually a good idea to store duplicate data in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Grant in Ann Arbor, Michigan, one of my Platinum members. Grant says, I followed your invoicing database setup and it works great, but I realized it doesn't keep track of the customer's address at the time the order was placed. It just pulls the current address from the customer table. So if the customer moves or updates their info later, I lose the original shipping address for that order. I know you usually say it's not a good idea to store the same data in more than one place, but in this case, what's the best way to handle that? Well, Grant, you are absolutely correct. The basic version of the invoicing database does not keep track of the, of the customer's address at the time the order was placed, only the customer's main address. So if you followed along with my invoicing database, you've got a customer form, right? The customer form's got the address right here. But if you create an order for that customer, notice there's no address information here. So if you print an invoice when they purchase whatever, right? There's their address, okay. Now let's say six months goes by and they change their address to something else. All right, forget about it. Open them back up again. Oh, can you send me a copy of my invoice and blah, blah, blah about my order six months ago? Sure, no problem. There's your invoice with the new address on it. And if you care about where this was shipped, or any of that stuff, well, that could be a problem. So, I generally tell people in the beginner classes especially, you don't wanna keep duplicated information in multiple tables in your databases. You wanna properly normalize everything. But there is an exception, and that exception is time. If you care about that information at the time that whatever it was happened, right, Whenever, whether you placed an order or a service call or whatever, whatever the information might happen to be, if you care about what the data was at that moment in time, then you wanna store a duplicate copy of it. So here we have the customer's address right now, right, but this can be changed. So what we're gonna have to do is when we create an order, we're gonna have to copy that address to this order as well. Now there are a couple of methods to do this. I'm gonna show you one method today and then I'll show you another method tomorrow in part two. But first, some prerequisites. First off, if you have not yet watched my invoicing video, go watch this first so you understand what I'm doing. This is where I show you how to build all this stuff, right? And side note, I do cover this issue in the members video. That's one of the things I talk about, right? I talk about copying the customer's address to each order so you know where the order was shipped or billed. I also, teach you how to do a product list. So you can pick a product and add it to the order because you'll have the same problem with products too if you got a product table, right? If you got prices today and you add them to an order, you don't want those prices changing in the future. So we do something similar in the extended cut for this. But I'm gonna show you how to handle the address problem today. And surprisingly today, we don't really need any VBA. We can use the method that we're gonna cover today without VBA, although, Tomorrow in part two of the method that I'm gonna show you does require a little bit of VBA, so you might wanna save yourself some time and go watch this first if you haven't watched it yet. And if you wanna learn some VBA, go watch this, about 20 minutes long. It'll cover everything you need to know to get started. These are free videos, they're on my website, they're on my YouTube channel, go watch those and then come on back. So to get this address onto this order, when you place a new order, we can use the same technique that we used to get this customer ID in here. Right now, this involves opening up the order form from the customer form, right? We've got a button right here that does that. When you do that, this guy can use what? The default value property, which is right, where are you? Right there, right? The default value, I'm gonna zoom in. Whoa, my zoom box is really big. Hang on, let me resize that. All right, so we can look at the forms customer F, customer ID to get that default value. We can do the same trick with the address fields, but before we do that, we have to have some address fields first in order to put that data in. So we've got address information in our customer table. And if we go to design view here, we've got address, city, state, zip, and country. I'm gonna select those fields. I'm gonna just copy those. All right, control C. 
Then we'll go to our order table, design that, and watch this. Click down here and just paste those fields in. Okay, now we've got a spot to hold those fields. So I'm gonna close this, save changes, yes. If you look in here now though, these should all be empty. All right, they're brand new fields. So you're gonna have to go through and update these old orders manually or do an, uh, an update query, or there's lots of other methods to do that. So this is only gonna work with new orders moving forward. The method I'm gonna show you tomorrow, you can go back and do more easily with, um, with old orders. And while we're doing this, we're gonna also steal these fields off of here. No sense in reinventing the wheel again, right? We're gonna go to design view. I'm going to copy all of these right like that. Copy. Let's go to the order form, which is down here, design view. And we need a spot to, to pick these, to drop these. I'm just gonna delete the notes for now. And we'll just paste them in here. There we go. All right, so there's your, oop. There's your address stuff for the order. You know what? You might want the notes. Let's put the notes back. Okay, here I'm gonna copy this notes box, click, copy, and then just paste that up here. They're named the same thing, so Access doesn't care. It just sees, oops, it just sees a box with the name notes. It doesn't mind, it doesn't mind. So we'll just do that and we'll stick the notes over here. There you go. As long as it works, right? Okay. Now, how do we get that data from here to here. Well, the same method we used here, right? So let's open this up again. I'm just gonna copy this. All right, let's go over here to the address field. Double click, go to data, default value, where default value is right there, paste that in, and this is instead gonna be address, All right? And then we'll do the same thing over here with city, default value, city, Move this over so I can get to it. There we go. State. Click. State. Zip code. Or whatever you call it in your country. And country. There we go. Save it. Close it. Close it. Close it. Open it. All right. Let me put a real address back in here. 101 Main Street. Whatever. Okay. Now, go in here, orders. Now on, a, on an existing order, it's gonna still be blank, but if I go to a blank new order, look at that. It all defaults in there. So any new orders that you create, if I put an order date in here like today, blah, 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 blah. Now I've got the address at the time of the order. And you can do this with, you can set up two of these if you want, make a build to and a ship to. In fact, I got separate videos on that as well. There's a video on that if you want to check that out. All right, but as I mentioned earlier, now if you like to go in through the customer form first to place all of your orders, this will work just fine. But some people like to go in through the order form. So you'll maybe have a button on here and they just open up the order form directly and have it open to a blank new one. And look at this, I'm getting all these pound name errors because that isn't open. Now you don't see the pound name error here because the, the bound field, the first field is actually hidden. So you don't see that. So in tomorrow's video, I will show you how to A, we'll get rid of this pound name error and B, I'll show you how you can pick from a list here, pick the customer and it will fill in all this information for you. And not only get the customer here, but it'll fill in the address. We'll cover that in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow. <clears throat> wait, let me get my, my announcer voice in. Tune in tomorrow. Same bat time. Same bat channel. <laughs> At least that's how I remember it when I was a kid. I haven't watched these in a long time. Uh, members, you can watch it right now because that's one of the benefits of being a member is you can watch stuff before it's released. And I'm going to keep recording right at the moment here, so you should be able to watch it in just a few minutes. But that's going to do it for your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. 
It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.